My name is Helen Conlon. I'm a research technician for the Reef Ecology team. And alongside my co-advisor, Kara Thompson, we've had the pleasure of advising the Conk Research class this term. Hi everyone, as Helen said, we're the Conk Research team of spring 2016. Our project was assessing the behavior of conch around freshly knocked conch shells, more commonly known as the graveyard theory. I'm Charlotte Haggerty. I'm Ellie Fredrickson. I'm Austin Halstead. I'm Renee Parkinson. Caroline Peters. Justin Allenson. And I'm Greg Pizzurro. Conch, or Strombus gigas, are marine gastropods, which means that they're underwater snails. They're found across the greater Caribbean, which is this area highlighted in dark blue on the map, stretching from Florida to South America. They're an important prey species and act as prey to a variety of marine organisms throughout their life, such as this loggerhead turtle, this Caribbean spiny lobster, and this spotted eagle ray. Conch are ecologically important as they act as grazers to eat algae and detritus, which is important for maintaining the health of seagrass beds, which are important nursery grounds for juvenile reef fish, are important for carbon sequestration, and are an important food source for many marine organisms. Conch are culturally important as Bahamians have been fishing conch for hundreds of years and they're a staple in the Bahamian diet. As you can see pictured here are conch fritters, which is, sure, it's is something that I'm sure that some of you had have or will have had in your time in the Bahamas. And as you can see, the queen conch is on the top of the Bahamian crest. This cultural reliance, in addition to the fact that the Bahamas exports six to seven million dollars worth of conch every year, has led to an overfishing of conch. Internationally, the conch fishery is in decline, and some regions, such as Haiti and the Florida Keys, have even seen their conch fisheries collapse entirely, and it's been found that once the conch fishery collapses, conch do not repopulate the area. Conch have been significantly declining in the Bahamas since 1993. As you can see on this graph, the dark gray shows 1993, and the light gray shows 2014. And in all the different, different depths that were sampled, there's been a significant decrease in the conch populace. Other contributors to conch decline are the outdated harvest laws, which state that conch can be legally harvested if they have a flared lip. However, legislation does not follow the current scientific research that says that conch are not sexually mature until they have a 15 millimeter lip thickness or the size of a Bahamian penny. Additionally, there's no closed season, which means that conch do not have time to replenish their population. Another commonly perceived contributor to conch decline is the graveyard theory, and the graveyard theory states that conch are moving away from freshly knocked shells or shells that have been recently harvested for their meat. A study done for the Nature Conservancy in 2011 showed that every one in four Bahamian citizens said that this was the top threat to conch decline. We did field tests on the graveyard theory here on the Island School campus at Boys Dorm Beach located here on the map. We had a sample size of 87 conch consisting of one adult conch which had a 15 millimeter lip thickness, 10 subadults which had a flared lip, and 76 juveniles which did not have a flared lip. We chose six random conch and placed them around a randomly chosen treatment object. Our treatment objects consist of a freshly knocked conch testing their visual cues and their olfactory cues or sense of smell, an old knocked conch used for visual cues, a rock used as a control to test if they were moving away from a foreign object, and nothing uses a con another control to test if they are just moving. So our trials consisted of placing six conch around a treatment object. Here in this setup diagram, you can see that the six conch are placed around the treatment object. The six conch are represented by the pink triangles and the treatment object is represented by the black circle. In this image, you can see that all the six conch are placed around the treatment object. You can see that their eye stalks are facing towards the treatment object so they can see what is in front of them. After an hour, we come back and we measure the distance that the conch traveled from the center of the treatment object to the center of the conch shell. As you can see, the conch have moved away from the, tre from the treatment object. Some results that we pulled from this study. We actually found that 98.7% of conch did not actually move out of the 2x2 two two meter quadrat that we set up on boys dorm, but only 1.3% did. Figure 2 shows the mean distance that queen conch moved away from, the treat, from their respected treatment objects. We actually found that there was a significant difference between a freshly knocked shell and a rock, but there was no significant difference between a freshly knocked shell, nothing, and an old knocked shell. 
So when focusing on comes with flared lips only, as shown here on the right side, we found that there was no statistical significance within our research project. Um, we found that the main distance moved um, between the Freshy Not Conk and the Rock were not statistically significant. We also found that there was a statistical significance between the Freshy Not Conk shell, nothing, and an old Not Conk shell. Okay, so just to keep in mind, we're focusing on comes with flared lips only, and that's this here. Um, and what we found is that there was a statistical, st st statistical difference between comes with flared lips, that is comes that are legal to be fished here in the Bahamas, um, than juveniles, which are illegal to be to fish here in the Bahamas. So uh, we actually found that there was more movement by juveniles from freshly knocked shells than from rocks, which could have been because of visual or chemical cues. However, the movement was still very minimal, and although the juveniles were moving away from the uh, freshly knocked shells a little bit, it was not enough to affect the conch populace and therefore not enough to support the graveyard theory. We also found that conch with a flared lip move more, which could be because of their larger strombid leap, which is how they move. Uh, as stated, we found that 99% of conch did not move more than one meter, and since the graveyard theory was the idea that conch were moving so far from freshly knocked shells that fishermen couldn't find them, then this data does not support the graveyard theory. We also found that there was no significant difference in the distance traveled by conch with a flared lip, which are conch that are legal to fish, from freshly knocked shells and from rocks, which you can find anywhere. And since the graveyard theory was the idea that conch were moving specifically from freshly knocked shells, this data further refutes the graveyard theory. Um, so what this resu these results might allude to is that overfishing might actually be the leading cause rather than the graveyard theory to the decline of conch, uh, conch in the Bahamas. And so for future research, we were considering uh, things like deep water stock assessments of conch, which is places in the exumas where we don't know necessarily how many conch are there, or the tendencies of the conch in this area, and then of course the actual population that conch there, and by doing so figure out uh, their overall tendencies in that area. And uh, another thing would be stock assessments, uh, assessments of the fishermen patterns in the Bahamas uh, as to figure out who's bringing in the conch, uh, where from, how many, uh, what life stage, how big, and the quantity of the harvest, and by doing so, figure out uh, how many are being taken during mating seasons, how many uh, are adults, how many are juveniles, how many are subadults, and by doing so, hopefully figure out uh, more of the tendencies of fishing, and as well, um, in general, how many conch are being taken, and by doing so, figure out what means need to be uh, implemented to prevent overfishing. So uh, the next steps for our research would be to replicate this experiment, specifically focusing on adults, so a larger sample pool of adults, and then take those findings, hopefully to the government, to change policy to reflect the fact that conch are overfished and the graveyard theory is not, in fact, the leading cause of this. And so those efforts would consist in a communications campaign and an outreach effort uh, partnering with uh, the BNT and BRIEF. The BNT is the Bahamas National Trust, and these are two NGOs which work to educate uh, Bahamians about marine issues facing the country today. And so ultimately focusing on the education of fishermen on a sustainable harvest versus an unsustainable harvest, so letting those juveniles fully mature so that they can reproduce before fishing them. Uh, so there's already been a series of knowledge and perceptions interviews with stakeholders in the conch fishery, so uh, government officials, local fishermen, local citizens, and it has been shown that there would be uh, support for the protection of nursery grounds so those juveniles can grow up and reproduce, but there's not support for a closed season because it is such an important fishery here that uh, the fishermen would not be willing to give up fishing conch for a certain amount of time, but they'd rather uh, ban the export of conch so that conch... Uh, as an industry would stay here in the Bahamas. Uh, so what can you do while you're here? Uh, one thing to consider if you choose to eat conch or don't choose to eat conch, uh, we recommend that you ask uh, to see that conch shell 
um, so that you can make sure that that lip is at least 15 millimeters thick or about the size of a, of a Bahamian penny. Um, and finally, in conclusion, I would just like to leave you with the statement that uh, the conch fishery is a staple here in the Bahamas. Fishermen, local people, they, they depend on it for their livelihoods and conch are overfished and it really is up to the Bahamian people to decide whether or not they want to have conch in their future. Uh, thank you. We'd like to acknowledge Claire Thomas, Chris Elvidge, Petra Seckers, uh, Clay Pollock, and Pauline Neves for their help on the study as well as uh, Carleton University. These are our, our citations and any questions? Yes. Out of curiosity, how far can a comp walk in, say, a month or a year? And then do a back of the envelope calculation on how far, or how many months, years, or decades it would take for that comp to walk so far that the Bahamian fishermen couldn't find it. <laughs> this, this, this theory has been, you know, a major stumbling block in getting rational conservation efforts within the country, uh, within the whole area. Right, so the question was how far can conch actually travel within uh, a month? So basically throughout their lives, uh, conch only have a home range of about three kilometers. And so the theory, the graveyard theory would be assuming that conch are going off that wall uh, and going deeper down so that they can't be fished. Uh, but basically that would not be a possibility. Man, three kilometers is not very much. So uh, again, the graveyard theory is even kind of out there as a theory itself. Um, the question was, what are some possible solutions that the conch can repopulate the area without having to put the fishermen at a disadvantage? So one um, suggestion for the protection of conch was to protect juvenile nursery grounds across the Bahamas so that juvenile conch have time to grow up and reach that sexual maturity without the, the threat of fishermen. Additionally, as I stated, six to seven million dollars worth of conch are exported to the United States every year. So people have been suggesting that conch remains a subsistence fishery so that conch stays locally in the Bahamas instead of sending that conch out to the United States. But that is a very prevalent issue. Uh, the question was, uh, how do conch, was it reproduce? Yeah. They, like, do they come together and kind of... No, it's not about reproduction. What I'm asking is, are they naturally congregators? Right. Not for sexual purposes, but are they naturally congregators? Okay. Yeah, so the question was, are they naturally Causing congregators? Not as, not as um, yeah, so they actually need, conch need uh, to have 47 adults per hectare, and a hectare is a thousand meters uh, by one meter, so it's, or a thousand meters by a thousand meters, and so it's a pretty big uh, range, and there needs to be 47 to be able to have like, a healthy population, and they found that here in the Bahamas, there aren't very many um, areas where we can find that many conch, which is detrimental to their population. Yes. How long does it take for a conch to mature? For a the question was, how long does it take for a conch to reach sexual maturity? And it's around six years. <laughs> the question was, how can you hear the ocean in a conch shell? <laughs> That is a very good question. 
that would be an interesting further study. 